Hi, this is Little Dwarf playing games while rambling incoherently into a microphone. Why? Well, just because I can. And they continue with Alan Wake blind. I'm going back to the cabin to save my editor, Barry, from the darkness. Or at least try. So let's do that. Mm, I was in this cabin before, and nothing has changed. So let's continue onwards towards the path. Although I I'm kind of out of mu out of uh, out of ammunition for my weapons, so I wonder if th if this is going to be enough to defeat whatever enemies are waiting for me at the end. I guess it's the birds. But uh, if I remember correctly, birds over the phone. I didn't really need to shoot at the birds, I just needed to point my light at them. Oh! Ah! Okay, so I, I, I managed to find all of the pages in the end. That's great, I feel great about that, because this one is restricted to nightmare difficulty. Mm -hmm. Body doubts wake sanity. Barry had never gotten along with Alice, but he knew Alan loved her with an almost frightening intensity. And now something had happened to Alice. And here was Al armed with a gun and saying things people got put in padded cells for. It was as if his friend had experienced a massive psychotic episode and was now totally disconnected from reality. It scared the shit out of Barry. Hmm. Maybe it was here from the beginning and I didn't notice it when I first left the cabin. I guess that's kind of debatable. Save Barry from the birds. Okay, I'll try. Ow! Ow, I am so glad you're here. A couple of them got in here before I blocked the chimney. This isn't normal. These birds are weird. Okay, there's one of those arrows that indicate Ashes of items. Mm. Mm. I'm not really sure how to defeat them. I, I, I doubt shooting at them going to be of much use. Especially because they're still... Hmm. I guess they go away uh, sort of group by group or, or, or something. Can I even go inside or is it still locked? Yeah, I guess he has locked the door. I I asked him to do it, in fact. And presumably he won't unlock them until it is safe again. The number of the birds is even really diminishing. Like, what am I even doing? Apart from dying. I'm not sure if I'm accomplishing anything, to be entirely honest. Maybe I need to shoot a flare in the air? Or hmm. 
And I'm not really sure if I'm accomplishing anything. You can open the door now. They're gone. Oh. Huh. That's weird, because the rest of them literally disappeared. They didn't uh, didn't fly away, they disappeared on the spot. Well. I guess he opened the uh, the other door. Hey, Al. I'm I'm sorry for thinking you were having a psychotic episode, man. I sent Barry to the town to ask around about a man fitting the kidnapper's description. He'd go through the archives of the local paper. Perhaps he could learn something. Anything about the island and the cabin that had disappeared. The man wanted a manuscript. I had to try to write him one to get Alice back. For me, the supernatural had always been nothing but a metaphor for the human psyche, a tool to use in writing fiction. Now, it was happening for real, and I couldn't put a single word on paper. Barry Wheeler speaking. This is Rose. Rose? I found Mr. Wake's pages. Oh, you sweet, brilliant girl. Could you and Mr. Wake come get them? I live in the trailer park outside the town. We'll be there in less than an hour. See you soon. Okay, this is for Have sure like a day. trap. Hope you come back soon. Welcome. She sounds very possessed. She looks very possessed as well. And uh, one of the warnings in the light sensitive print, it said that the darkness wears her face. So I guess that's what, that's who it was referring to.
Previously on Alan Wake, Alice has been kidnapped. Alan, please help me. Alice? You'll do exactly what I say if you ever want to see your wife again. I can't tell anyone except my agent, Barry. Damn it, Barry, they'll kill her. You're my best friend, and I'm worried that you're not right in the head. The ransom is a manuscript I supposedly wrote that's coming true before my eyes. It happened just the way it was on that page. So dark. I have found only a few scattered pages. I want the entire manuscript. The deadline ah. is in two days. How the hell did she get her hands on the manuscript anyway? I don't know. She's resourceful. I told you you were too hard on her. Listen, I found out all sorts of interesting stuff while I was digging around. Yeah. Mr. Wake, it's Sheriff Breaker. We have an FBI agent here, Agent Nightingale. FBI? He's anxious to see you. You'd better come to the station. Okay. I'll be right over, Sheriff. Let's make this quick, huh? Help you folks? Name's Randolph. I'm the manager. We're looking for Rose. Works as a waitress down at the diner. Rose, sure. Nice girl. Who wants to know? I'm Alan Wake. The writer, huh? I heard on the radio you were visiting. Well, I'll show you her trailer. Is that Rose? She's a nice girl. Always pays her rent on time. As I was saying, Al, I found all sorts of weird stuff from the local newspaper's archives. This place is crazy. Disappearances, mysterious deaths, urban legends come true, and get this, most of this stuff takes place around Cauldron Lake. Well, you ain't wrong, mister. The Indians thought the lake was a doorway to the underworld. I'm the God-fearing type myself. I, I don't hold with that sort of thing. Yeah, okay. Anyway, there was an island there owned by a guy called Thomas Zane. Now, some of the articles I found about him make him out to be a famous writer, but I ran a bunch of searches, couldn't find a single thing he wrote. Zane was heavily into diving, so much so that the place came to be called Diver's Isle. But the volcano under the lake erupted in 1970, and Zane went down with the island. Wait, I do remember a couple of books by Zane at the cabin. Mm. When I was supposedly on, there, mister. I'll take you to Rose's trailer with uh, with Alice. I wonder if this guy is like disabled from birth, or if 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 he has been wounded in the past, if he like had an accident or something, because you know it's he's very visibly limping. Yeah, how about that? It was there in the morning, as if it had fallen from the sky. But it would take a tornado to lift something like that. We're damn lucky it didn't crush any of the trailers. It's better. A local girl, Barbara Jagger, drowned in Cauldron Lake just a week earlier. They were lovers. Sure, Jagger's a local spook story. The scratching hag comes for you in the dark. Childish stuff like that. Anyway, Al, I'm just getting to the best part. All of the articles about this stuff were written by Cynthia Weaver. I asked around, and she's that crazy bag lady you met. What, the lamp lady? She can be a little loopy, but she's not homeless or anything. Yeah, anyway, she knew both Jagger and Zane before they both died, and she had some kind of a breakdown. Hmm. I kind of don't want to talk too much, to, as to not to interrupt him, so I'll just wait until he brings me to the correct place and then I'll talk about a bunch of things.
Well, mister, this here's Rose's trailer. You mind me asking what you want with her? We're just here to talk to her, pal. I guess Barry is, is coming inside. Or maybe he, he he's waiting for me, which is actually good. So mm, it seems this this game must have been episodic at some point, because uh, again it gave me this whole reminder of what happened in the previous episode. But it has only been like two hours since that exact thing happened, so that was kind of pointless and weird. Uh, and to be fair. If I did buy this game in like two hour chunks, I would be kind of annoyed. Like that's that's pretty pathetic, to be honest. Especially because I'm very slow in, in playing. You know, I look at everything, I stop often to talk about inconsequential bullshit. But if you just uh, went through it, I'm pretty sure you could finish each episode in like an hour and a half or something well each of the two I played so far so so that's overall pretty pathetic and kind of weird like I'm not sure what the developers were really really thinking uh, okay that's a hot dog stand hot dog chili dog corn dog taco dog the famous dog big dog monster dog belly burster oh uh, Who's thinking a jig? Stucky. Stucky was talking about this. The belly burster. Uh, special plates. Granny claws. Clam chowder. River special. Asgardian chicken. What? Cauldron lake. Fried plate. Zany chicken. Fried steak. Rabbit food. Salad. <laughs> I get it. It's a joke. Uh, 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 at, the ex at the expense of, of uh, vegetarians. Uh, okay. I'm just checking if I can do anything else. Mm, you know, explore anything else before I talk to her. Which is exactly my point, you know. Most people probably wouldn't. Like, most people don't really care about reading all the hot dog names or something like that. And even with that, it has only taken me, what, about two, two and a half hour to finish each of the episodes so that's pretty pathetic like if I didn't have them all on hand I would be kind of annoyed uh, with how the game is set up oh there's a, there's a dog hopefully it won't die a horrible death soon enough And I guess I am still kind of annoyed, because, as I said, it, it isn't really needed for the game to remind me every two hours what has just happened. It's kind of pointless, you know. They might have excised that from the game once they glued it back together into a single release or something. Like, I, I don't quite get their point uh, in in so far as, as, as leaving that in goes. Mm, okay, so I've explored all of the trailer park and there's literally nothing here apart from that uh, list of hot dogs, which, I'm not going to lie, was not the most fascinating thing I have seen in my life. Run these dogs. Okay, let's go and talk to that clearly possessed girl. Like, it's weird that Barry didn't really comment on the fact that she was sounding so weird, but I guess uh, he might be kind of obsessed with her, you know, uh, wanting to actually probably sleep with her or something. So presumably he doesn't really care that much about how she sounds, it's more, more about uh, what she looks like. Welcome 
to... to... Oh dear, Mr. Wake, I'm... I'm so glad you're here. Rose, you have my manuscript? Oh. Oh yes. Yes. Please, come in. Oh come on, she sounds... And they are drinking something hey, she gave them. Really good. It's poisoned, right? It has to be. Rose. Yes. My manuscript. I really need it. I understand. I know what you need. A muse to inspire you. Oh, for Barry? She doesn't have anything. Yeah. Uh, hey, Al. Al, what's... Oh, oh come on. Barry. That's... What? That's stupid. There have been, like, what? three separate warning signs. And they've caught none of them. I'm actually annoyed at that. It's coming for you, hiding in my barber's skin. I'm too weak to stop it. You must turn the lights on. I promised I'd come visit you and your lovely wife. You must finish what you started. I insist. You must turn the lights on. Turn the light on. I felt nauseous, hung over. Only anger kept me going. I can't tell reality from dream anymore, but it seems I have an imaginary editor to help me. She's an old woman in a funeral dress. I call her Barbara Jagger. She's very strict. I I'm writing faster and faster. My manuscript is being heavily revised. The edits are getting very aggressive, and each day there's less of me and more of her. I hate it, but I know she's right. She promises me I can save Alice this way. She knows more of this than I do, about the complex incantation I'm attempting, about this place. She's worked with another writer under similar circumstances, Thomas Zane. The genre of the story seems to be shifting. It's turning into a horror story. I'm getting close. I can feel it. Mm, okay. So I, I, I imagine this is Rose's room, and she has a belief in change. She has a full-blown kind of shrine to me, a complete with photos and candles, and the latest of my books, The Silent Stop. But to be honest, the, the photos seem as if they are not all of the same person, but they must be. Okay, what's this book about? There. Something side. Damn it, I can't read that and it's annoying me. Uh, collection of my books, I've read about them already. Farewell to Sanity. Mm, okay, let's. Is this an air conditioner or? Because at first, <laughs> at first I thought it, it's a microwave <laughs> on a on a wall, and I was like, "What? Who would have kept a microwave, uh, you know, in their bedroom and on a wall on all places?" But I'm pretty sure it has to be like air conditioning or something. Mm. Okay, that's Rose Barry. took a day for me. I had less than 12 hours left to meet the kidnapper. All I could do was get Barry into the car, work something out once I got on the road. Barry was out of it. He was way too heavy to carry. <laughs> You're right. I deserve more money. I'm so handsome. Mm, leave the trailer. Okay, but first I'm going to steal her coffee. Cooking with corn, 72 tasty recipes, okay. Welcome to the Oh Dear Diner. What can I get you today? Coffee? I couldn't work up much hate for Rose, 
Something had used her to get to me and left its mark. First refill is free. Milk and sugar on the counter there. Would you like to hear today's specials? Thank you. A nice day. Come back soon. Hmm. Actually, is there no bathroom in this trailer house? I guess there might not be because uh, it's like a trailer park, so maybe there are public bathrooms to use, but there is the laundry machine here and her her bedroom here. Huh. Okay, that's kind of that kind of sucks. Like if you wanted to go to the bathroom like in the middle of the night, you'd have to actually get dressed and leave. That well, I guess I guess if you're a man, you could piss in the sink, but but even then, it doesn't solve uh, the entire problem because what if you need to take a dump? Like you know, at this point, a sink is no longer going to cut it, even for a man. Because to be honest, I I could entirely. My gun and flashlight were gone. I'd have to find a way to get Barry into the car as quickly as possible. There was no time to waste. I could entirely envision, envision myself living in a, in a trailer home like this, because I don't require much space. And I, to be honest, I like small, uh, kind of cramped spaces, because they make me feel more cozy. Uh, but I would need a bathroom, like, come on. Mr. Randolph liked Rose, that little smile she had, how she was still sweet when life had tried so hard to make her bitter. It wasn't any of his business what she did in her trailer, but those strangers, the writer and his smart-ass sidekick, looked like trouble, and they'd been in there for hours, way past her normal bedtime. He reached for the phone and called the sheriff's station. Hmm. Is that where the agent comes in? Because there's supposedly an FBI agent uh, that wants to see me, and the manuscript seemed to have foreshadowed uh, him actually, you know, shooting at me and trying to arrest me. I just stepped outside to catch a breath of fresh air. Let me tell you, the weather's getting heavy. Nights like this make me especially glad I'm here talking to you and not home in bed. Once once the weather takes a turn like this, I can't sleep at all. It's all tangled bed sheets and dark thoughts, punctuated by the occasional plunge into nightmare. <laughs> is it just me? Well, perhaps it is. But I hope I can make the night a little bit easier to get through. Caller, you're on KBF FM. Hey, hi, it's Walt Snyder. What's on your mind, Walt? Well... I ain't the way you are, but, well, uh, I can't sleep either, you know? Uh, I've just been staring out of the window here, trying to make sense of it all, but, uh, I ain't been drinking either, you know? I just... Well, you sound like a man with a problem, Walt. Something like that, Walt. Yeah. Well, you know, he's, uh, you know, Danny's my best friend, and, uh, they let me out on bail today. And now I'm just alone here at the window, you know, waiting. Man, and there's something in the air tonight, man. Yeah, I was just outside looking up at the sky above our broadcast tower thinking the same thing. What are you waiting for, Walt? I don't know. I, you know, something's gonna happen. Okay.
Hmm. I wonder if that water guy uh, is kind of in the know about the darkness. Like, does he realize what's happening? Well, maybe not realize. Does he kind of did he witness parts of it, and now he's kind of confused uh, and has been drinking because of it? Because mm. that that old lady that uh, walks everywhere trying to check if the lights are operational, she's surely onto something. But everyone thinks she's crazy, whereas in fact she's probably the most reasonable person around, uh, given uh, the exact specifics of how the darkness operates. You know, it's kind of crucial to keep your lights uh, in functioning order. done to that poor girl this is agent nightingale fbi get him up hemingway you're under arrest you move a muscle i'll unload right in your goddamn face stay right where you are Blaine. my appointment with the kidnapper. Okay. So I guess that's the moment uh, that's the moment the manuscript spoke about uh, where the, 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 the FBI agent fired at me. I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to run from them uh, and not snoop about. They are very clearly pursuing me. Mm, not too fast, but still. To be honest, if the police uh, don't see anything without the flashlights, then how come I'm able to find my way relatively easily? Because it seems to me it's pretty implausible for Alan Wake to evade them uh, so easily, uh, because comparatively I would assume uh, police officers are a lot more fit than a writer is, so it would be easier for them to run him down. The Dark Presence Sleeps. For decades, the darkness that wore Barbara Jagger's skin slept fitfully in the dark place that was its home and prison. It was hungry and in pain. It dreamed of its nights of glory when the poet's writing had called it from the depths and given it a brief, terrible taste of power and freedom. The rock stars had stirred it from the deep sleep the poet had sunk it back to in the end. When it sensed the writer on the ferry, it opened its eyes. Hmm. Hmm. So this seems to imply that the darkness was waiting for me because there's specifically something uh, unique about writers or about maybe artists in general who can kind of, I don't know, when they write about it, it somehow empowers it or something. Because it says, it says here, uh, it dreamed of its nights of glory when the poet's writing has called its form from the depths and even gi given it a brief, terrible taste of power and freedom. So it's almost like the darkness needs to be written about to, to be sort of alive 
or, or something? I'm not sure, I'm just speedballing ideas here. Actually, a pretty valid point. Like, I did in fact not have a gun. And he did in fact almost shoot a civilian. So, that is something to be angry about, kind of. Although, I guess. Unfortunately, worst things have happened in the States. Like, I'm kind of terrified of the American police, or at least of the of what I've, uh, you know, heard about, about it, which I understand this is a very uh, contentious issue, and its negative news has a lot more power. So I understand that there are thousands of very good and diligent police officers, but, you know, you still hear, hear those stories about cops uh, killing unarmed people. Uh, you know, during the, during an arrest or something, because they assumed they might be dangerous or something. Like I, I once read read a, read a story about uh, where a, a police officer was called because somebody wanted to commit suicide, and they killed that man. Like it was a man with serious, like you know, mental problems who wanted to hurt himself, and they killed him upon arriving on the scene. Like. It boggles my mind. How can things like that happen? That's kind of crazy. But, um, but you know, as I said, I, I do realize that's a very complicated issue, and you shouldn't uh, you shouldn't portray it in such a one-sided way. And I'm not an American myself, so I cannot speak from personal experience. I'm just speaking from what the media, uh, you know, presents about how American police acts compared to European police, uh, but this episode has been long enough, so I'm going to end it here. That's all for this one, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!